Parents around the country are sounding an alarm about a crisis in the classroom where they feel they're being pushed out and their children are being taught what to think and believe instead of how. And now these grassroots organizations are popping up everywhere and moms or dads are getting involved and asking questions about what's really being taught at school. Well, joining us right now, Nicole Neely, president and founder of Parents Defending Education. Good morning to you, Nicole. Welcome to the National Desk. Great to have you. Thanks for having me. So your organization, Parents Defending Education, has been following specifically Somerville Public Schools in Massachusetts, where the school district says it's working to, quote, improve equity and access for their students. Specifically, the school district is looking to implement basically a list of what they're calling new norms, including experiencing discomfort as part of the process of healing and transformation. Why are you guys involved with this? Talk us through what they're doing right now. What is the school district looking to achieve? Sure. So in, in this push towards intentionally creating discomfort with students, I mean, let's take a step back. You're, you're basically trying to mentally break down a bunch of children to rebuild them in your image. I think that's a really dark and really inappropriate use of taxpayer dollars. There's a way to teach history. There's a way to teach social studies in a way that doesn't make children feel bad, question their existence, and, you know, start to view others, um, their peers and their family by immutable characteristics first and foremost. We used to teach children to be good human beings and not through the lens of identity politics. And they're also partnering, I understand, with the uh, Learning for Justice, which is an organization created to, to what they say, quote, dismantle white supremacy, strengthen intersectional movements, and advance the human rights of all people. And according to their website, studies show that children of any age are able to understand that there are more than two gender categories when the concept is explained to them in a simple, age-appropriate manner. So they're learning this in preschool, kindergarten, elementary school. Is that correct? That is correct. And I mean, let's think about the ages of those children. Preschoolers, kindergarten, those are four-year-olds, five-year-olds, kids who still believe in the tooth part, in the tooth fairy. And they're being taught now that gender is a social construct. I mean, it's, you know, this is, these are deeply confusing things to, for children. And, and we're seeing very, I mean, highly controversial. And, and, you know, many people disagree that, you know, they think it's a medically suspect idea. Um, and so the fact that this is what we're teaching children, instead of, instead of teaching children how to read, how to write, how to you know, perform math, I think is, is, again, a really, really inappropriate use of taxpayer dollars and something that families should do, not schools. And I think a lot of parents are saying right now, from what I'm seeing on some of these websites as well, they're upset because they feel like they need to have it say in some of what they're calling is part of this mandatory education that they're providing in some of these school districts. And with parents defending education being heavily so involved in schools across the U.S., where else have you seen some of these school districts that adopt similar teachings and what has been the response from parents and others in the community? Sure, we have a tip line. We receive um, you know, up to 200 tips a week from across the country. So parents are deeply unhappy about um, the gender issue. Um, there, we have seen districts across the country from Oregon to Wisconsin to New York State where ch uh, children are being transitioned behind their parents' backs. Schools are maintaining two separate sets of records and parents don't even know that this is taking place. The kids called a different name. And the parents are not able to get proper medical treatment um, in terms of kind of the racial let's break people down and you know kind of rebuild them. Um, that's happening in schools across the country as well. And I think you know COVID was a real eye-opening experience for a lot of parents because suddenly classrooms were in people's living rooms and they were able to see for the first time what their children were learning and what they were not learning. Um, again, think about the learning loss, the where proficiency rates are after two years of a pandemic. Our children are failing in schools. They're only in schools for a short period of time, and they're not being taught to catch up, you know, read at grade level, things like that. Instead, they're being taught these extremely divisive and controversial topics with the little time and money that our schools have. And I think parents are rightfully demanding a focus back on the basics. Nicole, I'm always surprised when I see parents who basically have no clue as to what their kids are learning in school because this is something, like you said, that parents paid more attention to once their kids were home doing virtual learning. How much of a response are you getting from those parents who say, no, this isn't going on, I don't, this is not happening in my school district, only to find out later that it is? I think there is kind of an element of out of sight, out of mind. And that's why we encourage people, ask questions. Ask your teacher for the curriculum. File a public records request if you're not getting the answer you, you want. Um, because these are your children at the end of the day. Um, and you shouldn't have to try and deprogram them from what their, their teachers are forcing down their throats. You should know what's going on and you should be comfortable with it. Um, these are your tax dollars in public schools. These are your children. And so that's why we have, every time we get a tip, we put it up on our website. We vet it. We fact check it. 
We make sure that people send us a PDF or a screenshot. And we let people make up their minds for themselves. Is this the kind of thing that you want your four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old learning? In many cases, the answer is no. And I think once people see those anecdotes and they're able to make up their mind for themselves, they think, Ugh, you know what, where there's smoke, there's fire. And then they start doing their own digging and they're often horrified by what they find. And the debate over masks right now really heating up in a lot of school districts across the country because so many governors have, have decided to let parents determine whether or not they want their kid to wear a mask in school. Where do you guys stand on this issue and what are you doing to raise awareness about this? Well, I live in the state of Virginia right now, and so that's a very hot topic. Um, a lot of parents are deeply unhappy that their children are still being forced to go to school with masks in violation of the government, uh, the governor's new order. Um, and so I think we're starting to see a lot of this move to litigation where, you know, parents feel that this is this should be their decision. If you want to send your child to school with the mask, it should be up to you. Many parents have vaccinated their children. Other parents have not. We personally as an organization don't take a stance on this. But we do believe at the end of the day, this is a parental rights issue. And it's not the kind of thing that should be dictated or mandated by a government agency. Yeah, what do you make of the mask mandate in Los Angeles right now, where students right now can no longer wear cloth masks? In fact, health officials now saying they have to wear surgical grade masks like N95s or KN95s. Where do you guys stand on this? And, and what's your response to that? Sure. I mean, you know, there is a shortage of these K95 masks and they're very difficult to breathe through. I think a lot of parents very rightfully are deeply concerned about the impact that masking has had on their children's development, on speech. I brought a Girl Scout troop and just over the weekend I was talking to a mother who said her daughter's speech impediment um, has gotten worse over the past several years because she's not able to read lips. She's not able to pronounce things properly. And so I think, you know, as we have districts that are rolling out and changing these mask mandates, remember initially we were told cloth was good, then it was no mask, then we had to have gloves. I think people have just had whiplash at this point from the government changing their minds. And so even if your district tells you you can't send your child to school without this K95, it's a, you know, it's a question whether you can access that and if you have the money to do so. And so I think this is just yet another burden that we're putting on parents. Um, and it's just adding to their deep and you know enduring frustration about how they are being treated because their voices are not being heard. And frankly, many, many school officials just don't want parents to talk or speak up about this issue at all, period. Nicole Neely, great having you this morning. Look forward to talking to you again in the future. Have a great week.